I want to thank one of you for sending in a question about the faith. Bob McMillian submitted a question recently that is kind of fun to think about. That is, if the apostles were alive today, or if modern marketing and advertising media had been available in the first century, would the apostles undertake a modern ad campaign? Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. Would the apostles advertise? Answers to this question almost certainly run the gamut. Some people would believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that they absolutely would. Any technique which broadens the reach of the gospel should be a part of the church's strategy of spreading the good news. Others, on the other hand, would shudder at the notion and argue to their dying breath that the apostles would never consider advertising the gospel using techniques ordinarily associated with commercial enterprises. My first answer to the question is a big, fat, unequivocal, I don't know. When it comes to speculation about what historical figures would have done or would have said about something in the modern world, I tend to be pretty cautious and conservative. There's just very little to go on in scripture that would be analogous to this question. And without any such analog, I tend to err on the side of caution about making any sweeping claims one way or another. But with that reservation out of the way, let me take a stab at a somewhat nuanced answer. According to Matthew, when Jesus met with his disciples after the resurrection, he gave them some pretty clear marching orders. We call these marching orders the Great Commission. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Luke also records a similar commission in the book of Acts, but in slightly different terms. Jesus says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In both cases, the charge to the disciples is unequivocal. They are to spread the gospel message throughout the entire world. For some people, That's enough information to prove that the disciples would absolutely have used any means at their disposal to fulfill the commission, including using mass marketing. But others would not be so fast to draw this conclusion. Instead, they would point to some specific stories about how the gospel actually spread to paint a very different picture. One story in particular tells us a lot. Once again, it comes from Acts and concerns a particular conversation. It goes like this. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. The story continues with Philip explaining the passage and the Ethiopian asking to be baptized. Many people would take this as just one example among many to suggest that the spread of the gospel is not achieved through mass marketing, but through one-on-one conversations. It's one thing to hear about Jesus. It's another thing altogether to have a personal conversation with a believer. So which is it? Mass marketing or one-on-one conversations? My answer is that this is a false choice. There's no reason to choose one to the absolute exclusion of the other. 
people can hear the good news in a variety of ways, including through mass marketing. But even when they do, there is no substitute for personal conversations in which one believer tells another person what the faith means to them. This is my 30,000 foot level simple answer to this question. But as you might imagine, there's more to it than I'm letting on here. So when we return tomorrow, we'll probe this question a little more deeply. And by the way, if you have questions or issues you'd like to see me, see me take on, go to the comments section below and add a comment or a question. But now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.